it's time to uh, go on to the next uh, presentation, the second presentation by uh, Emmanuel uh, on the intraoperative ventilator optimization. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you very much, Samia. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Uh, happy to be here uh, with you behind your computer and to discuss about uh, the use of mechanical ventilation during surgery. And our view are on the use of mechanical ventilation in surgical patients are largely evolved in the last few years, especially because we realized that mechanical ventilation can create some damage within the lungs, even in patients uh, not suffering from IRDS. Uh, but also even in patients in the operating room, in patients with healthy lungs. And we have now some data showing that there is a relationship between mechanical ventilation and outcome in surgical patients. And for example, uh, one of these studies is um, sh show Earth that in fact postoperative pulmonary complications are very common. And today it's quite clear that postoperative pulmonary complications are the second most common uh, surgical complication for uh, following uh, surgical site infections. We have an incidence, obviously very different uh, according to the type of surgery which is concerned, but as you can see, for example, uh, very high incidence even for patients uh, operated from very common procedure like uh, lower gastrointestinal surgery. I'm sorry. OK. Uh, and the overall incidence is around 30%. So 30% of, pa of patients can develop complication following uh, surgery. Obviously, mechanical ventilation is not the only uh, cause of pulmonary complication. There are very different um, causes. Mechanical ventilation is one of them, uh, but there is again a relationship between the use of inadequate ventilator setting during surgery, even for a very short period in time, and the occurrence of uh, complication, and clearly a relationship between, for example, tidal volume and complication. And in this paper, for example, you can see a clear relationship between the range of tidal volume which is used during surgery and the probability of developing complication following surgery with an increase in complication since tidal volume increase and become higher than eight milliliter per kilogram predicted body weight. And finally, it's this, the same also um, with the plateau pressure Again, just like uh, in the ICU patient, and when the plateau pressure increases and becomes higher than 20 or 22 uh, centimeter of water, there is an increase in the risk of developing uh, complication following surgery, again, in patients not suffering from RDS, in patients with LC lungs. So we have to realize that our settings can create damages to the lung in our surgical patients. And today, uh, we don't have clear re recommendations, but the recommendations uh, will uh, be available early in 2019. We hope with Tamir that we will be able to produce this uh, recommendation in France. But today, we can propose some guidelines, or quite guidelines, uh, suggesting that uh, in surgical patients, we have to set our tidal volumes maybe between 6 and 8 milliliters per kilogram predicted body weight with the use of a moderate level of PEEP. The minimal level probably is uh, 5 centimeters of water and there is absolutely no reason not to use PEEP. And uh, again, the minimal level should be around 5, maybe higher in some specific patient, for example, uh, obese patients. In addition to a recruitment maneuver in some uh, circumstances uh, and Obviously, we have to uh, be very clear on the limit, especially the limit for the plateau pressure, and not not to uh, to go higher than 20 or 25 uh, centimeter of water. And my last message is about inspired oxygen concentration. Again, there are data showing that, or at least suggesting that, when you apply too high level of oxygen it can be responsible for some adverse events. So 
again, maybe a more restrictive approach regarding uh, oxygen administration with very restrictive objective, not necessary uh, to have a peripheral oxygen saturation higher than 95 to 96%. So very, very simple message, but I, I quite convinced that in, if we are able to apply th these um, strategies, we will be able to reduce the incidence of complication in our surgical patients. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Emmanuel, for this clear message and for this re really new uh, important uh, key message on our clinical practice. Thank you. I will ask my uh, colleagues, uh, Audrey and Francois, if uh, they have some uh, comment or question, suggestion for Emmanuel about uh, the recommendation. No, not for a recommendation. I totally agree with your recommendations. But I have just a question about the huge shape yeah. of the tidal volume. Because, OK, we everybody agree that above probably 8 or 10 milliliters by kilogram of tidal volume is deleterious. But we, we, we know that below four or five, maybe the mortality also increased or complication. Yeah, so yeah. it's very difficult. OK, we, we can set not, not above a level, a threshold, but for the lower threshold, it's difficult to I perfectly agree with you, uh, Francois. And it's a, a very important message to also have a, a warning uh, regarding uh, too low tidal volumes. And if you decrease your tidal volume below maybe five, uh, obviously a milliliter per kilogram per body weight, you can create the condition of uh, loss of aeration in within the lungs, and you can create the recruitment, which also can be associated with uh, complications. So be careful. Six to eight is probably um, a range that is uh, acceptable, but we we must be very cautious with the use of too low tidal volumes. And uh, yes, I'm right. Okay. But probably you're right, and uh, one of the main message may be that uh, for the future, we should change uh, our paradigm and now in the operating room we should speak always both yeah tidal volume and pip yeah maybe to speak only about tidal volume alone or only pip is probably in my point of view a mistake and now we should always speak about both and it's very easy what you said emmanuel maybe the magic number 7 it's very easy to remember because you said always from six <laughs> to eight, yeah. from six to eight, you said. Maybe Just one, say one seven. magic number seven, maybe it's very easy for us to remember. What do you think about this seven tidal volume, milliliter per kilogram? Seven, seven centimeters for, as you said, for the majority of the patient, because uh, maybe you can say one word about the other patient. I don't know what about you, you, you think about yeah. this patient, but I don't know, elderly, you can. Yeah, yeah you're perfectly right. Uh, mechanical ventilation again, both in the ICU and in the operating room, should be considered as a bundle. And uh, it's not only tidal volume, it's not only PEEP, it's not only FiO2. We have to put all together a lower tidal volume, a moderate level of PEEP, maybe some recruitment maneuvers, a moderate level of uh, inspired oxygen. And it's only when you do everything uh, right that you can see objective uh, improved outcome in patients. So. Yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a bundle. And um, yes, you, you're perfectly right. It's between six and eight. Maybe the right number is seven. But probably uh, in the next future, we will have some tools that will allow us to better personalize our settings, yes. to better individualize our settings. Because I don't know, maybe in some patients, six to eight is right. But maybe in some patients, five is better than six, or seven is better mm -hmm. than six. So we need to have tools, very simple tools, to allow us better um, individualization. And uh, your question was, um, what about uh, other kind or type of patients? We need some data, um, and I know that Audrey will contribute to uh, give us some important information in obese patients because today it's very difficult to uh, apply this recommendation on obese patients because, in fact, we have very little uh, information regarding uh, obese patients. Maybe uh, we need to apply higher level of PEEP, maybe 10, 
can be a, a good compromise for uh, obese patients, but in fact we don't know. Uh, and again, we need some more data. Uh, in emergency surgical patient, you know, Samir, that uh, there will be the improved two trial that we uh, will begin in ninety. In uh, what is the improved two trial? <laughs> the improved two trial. It's the following of the improved one trial, uh, and which is um, designed to evaluate the impact of this kind of strategy in patients operated from uh, emergency abdominal surgery because we know that in this kind um, or this specific population of patients the incidence of respiratory failure following surgery is dramatically high around 20 to 30 percent of patients develop uh, respiratory failure with a very high and too high mortality uh, because of this uh, event and we don't have data uh, regarding the use of this um, type of strategy in emergency uh, surgical patients. So the improved two trial will in fact evaluate two approach. Uh, uh, the first one with a low tidal volume, moderate or low PEEP and no recruitment maneuver uh, and will be uh, compared to uh, an increased approach or open lung approach as you say and combining again a moderate PEEP, moderate, um, moderate uh, tidal volume for, uh, sorry, higher level of PEEP, recruitment maneuver and so on, again a bundle in this uh, specific population. Emmanuel to perform all your recommendation, do we need some specific ventilator in anesthesia? Or can I perform this recommendation in all ventilators in the market today in all countries, not only in Europe yeah. or in North America? Could you say something it's about this? It's a very important message because today our ventilator ma machine in operating room are able to do everything. You don't need to have a new ventilator. You don't need to have uh, or to buy the latest uh, ventilator. With every kind of ventilator, you can just apply the moderate level of tidal volume. You can apply a moderate level of PEEP. It can be some, in some cases, difficult to perform recruitment maneuvers. And in this kind of, uh, with this kind of procedure, you, you probably need to have a, a newest generation ventilator. But at least for the tidal volume, for PEEP and for FiO2, it's very easy to do that with every kind of ventilator from every um, uh, industry. So even if you are in a very small hospital in the Middle East, in the north of the France, or uh, everywhere in the world, you can perform uh, protective lung ventilation in the, uh, in the operating room of use. For me, it's clear about tidal volume, about PEEP, but, if it is, but it's not clear for me how I can perform a recruitment maneuver with a cheaper anesthesia ventilator. Could you give us, for the clinician, a simple way to perform for the majority of the patient a recruitment maneuver when probably hypoxemia occurred? Yeah, um, you have different approach uh, for the recruitment procedure. Probably the, the most simple one is to use the, the balloon. And uh, uh, obviously, uh, it's very easy to do that with, again, every kind of ventilator. Just to push <laughs> on the balloon and uh, well uh, balloon, yeah, and you have to, uh, the, uh, to, to before to uh, apply the, the, the right level of pressure, not to, dip to, not to uh, apply a too high level of pressure. Again, with Every kind of ventilator, you can also perform CPAP. It's very easy to do that, just to switch the ventilator mode from uh, control mechanical ventilation to pressure support and to apply the uh, PEEP of 30 to 40 centimeter of water. So it's very easy to do that. And again, the, the newest generation of ventilation um, uh, will allow us to apply the uh, automatic procedure. So in the next future, this will become again easier and easier to do that. But again, you're right, you can do that very easy, easily with just the balloon. Emmanuel, as you state and as you know, the obese patient population increased. Yeah. And then we have a question about this, I'm sorry, because I think it's very relevant uh, question is, how do you manage to obtain a low plateau pressure in obese patients? Yeah. In other words, do you recommend that for the obese patient, uh, we should apply the same advice limit or limit value of non-obese patients? Thank you, Manu. 
the, the response is obviously no. Um, the, the, the limits of 20 to 25 cannot be applied directly to obese patients because, um, in fact, we have to consider that it's not only plateau pressure, but it's transpulmonary plateau pressure that should be, in fact, targeted. But it's very difficult to do that. You need to have a, 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 a the pressure within the uh, pleural space, so to use a catheter uh, within the esophagus, so it's very difficult to do that in a daily routine practice. But even if the target is not 20 to 25 in obese patient, but maybe 28 to 30, the concept is the same. You have to uh, give a look to the plateau pressure and avoid too high level of plot pressure. I don't know what will be the right value to target. Maybe again 28, 30 in obese patients, just because the, the compliance is different, just because the compliance of the thorax is different. You can have higher than, um, level of plot pressure than in non-obese, but the, the, the concept is the same. Be careful and give a look to the plot pressure. That means one of the major message today is we should absolutely monitor the plateau pressure yeah. in all operating rooms. Yeah. Do you think that it is performed in the world, around the world? Because when I visit some hospital, some operating room, I I don't f see always plateau pressure. I see yeah. that some use pressure Be control mode. Yeah. Other use only uh, volume mode without any pause and then you are don't have... Uh, what's your advice? Yeah. Um, Major message today. Again, we have to change our meaning uh, regarding uh, mechanical ventilation. And whether you use pressure control or volume control ventilation, you have to uh, give a look to the plateau pressure. And, okay, uh, the peak pressure is important. The mean pressure is probably also important. But the the best and the most valuable information come from the plateau pressure. And obviously, if you decided to use volume control mode, you have to apply a certain amount of pose, inspiratory pose, to have this information uh, being available from the ventilator. But again, it's very easy to do that. Um, and we have to be more um, focused on the plateau pressure, yeah. Emmanuel, please. The last question yeah. I have is um, using this uh, new generation of ventilation called, you said, lung protective ventilation, which combine PEEP, low tidal volume, and recruitment. Could you uh, speak us about the complication that can occur? Do you have some complication? What kind of complication? I don't know. Hypercapnia, because you are hypoventilated. Yeah. Side Imodine, I think you can uh, summarize us on some recommendations of the procedure. Uh, in practice, in fact, uh, we don't have so much problem with the use of lung protective mechanical ventilation. In some cases, uh, as you said, you can have some uh, hypercapnia, but it's very co easy to do and to, to correct the problem just in crising. Uh, the, 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 the respiratory rate, but again, in fact, in daily practice, we, we can we can say that this kind of problem do not really occur, and in most cases, you don't have any problem regarding uh, the CO2. The other uh, kind of problem that can or should be uh, discussed are obviously hemodynamics alteration, and obviously if you apply too high level of pressure, too high level of PEEP, and obviously when you perform recruitment maneuver, you can have some uh, uh, hemodynamic alteration, drop in arterial pressure, cardiac output, and um, again, uh, we have to, 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 to be careful uh, and to focus also on hemodynamics in our patient. When you apply the lung protective mechanical ventilation, you can also give a look to the cardiac output, and it's very easy to uh, just optimize your patient, giving fluid or uh, vasopressor in some cases, just to correct arterial pressure and cardiac output before performing a recruitment maneuver, obviously. So again, it can be uh, associated with some adverse events, but in fact, there are no so much problem. Okay, 
Thank you very much. I have one question about the children, but I think it's not our focus uh, for this topic. Maybe yeah. it could be next year. That's why our colleague said maybe uh, we cannot uh, but start it's to exactly about the same for the children. Maybe the same. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Emmanuel.